Now, before insulin was available, type 1 diabetes was an automatic de death sentence. People could be kept alive for a few extra months by being given extreme diets, but basically it was a cause of death in young people and no one could do anything about it. But now we give insulin. And it's useful to think about how this came about because most of us, if we can see anything at all, it's purely because we stand on the shoulders of giants. And insulin was developed by two people, Frederick Banting here and Charles Best. Now at the time, uh, Charles Best was actually still a, a student. So that's quite uh, inspirational for some of us, that while you're still students, you can come up with some great discovery, which would be great. And um, Banting actually had been a, a surgeon in the First World War. He'd served with distinction in the First World War at the Battle of Cambrai. Uh, was injured, awarded a military cross. So quite a distinguished man already, really, in many ways. But then he went on, and in 1920, 1921, he was thinking, well, is it the secretions of the pancreas which are the problem in type 1 diabetes? And actually, if we go back a bit, there was a guy called Paul Langerhans. I think he was German. And in 1869, Langerhans had identified some clusters of cells in the pancreas, and they didn't know what they were for. We, we do call them the islets of Langerhans. But Banting thought that maybe these were something to do with insulin. So what they actually did was they took the pancreas out of a dog and the dog developed type 1 diabetes, as you would expect. But then secretions from another dog and injected it into the dog he'd taken the insulin, taken the pancreas from. So he gave insulin from one dog into a dog who'd had its pancreas taken out and that dog improved. But the trouble with using dogs was that the amount of insulin available was very small. So they went on to use cattle because they've got big pancreases. And he started to try and extract insulin from cattle pancreases. And they were able to do this and they got enough insulin to keep several dogs alive. And Marjorie here was one of those first dogs to be kept alive with bovine insulin. And then Bertram Collip was the biochemist who worked with them, and he purified the insulin. So it was suitable for injection into humans. It didn't have lots of bits of dead cow pancreas in it. He purified it. And the first people to actually test it were Banting and Best themselves. They actually injected themselves with insulin that Collip had purified to see what happened. And of course, they went hypo. They went a bit faint and dizzy. And Collip realised what was going on, and, and developed glucose treatments for hypoglycemia, which of course we still use. So they'd had the proof that the dog could be kept alive after it had its pancreas removed by giving insulin, and they'd now purified the insulin. And they'd tried it on themselves, which of course is another noble thing to do. And in 1920, 1922, Leonard Thompson was in a local hospital he was a 14-year-old boy and he was dying from type 1 diabetes. And he went along with this insulin, gave Leonard the insulin, and of course he was essentially cured of his type 1 diabetes. And then in 1923, uh, I think it was Eli Lilly started mass production of insulin and it became available throughout the developed world. In some poorer countries, of course, insulin is still not always available, which of course is, is tragic. So, Banting and Best, discoverers of insulin.